for the Muhammad Show with you. Uh, our subject today is to talk about the uh, parabolic transsolar field and in the operation of uh, gas turbine cycle, mainly based on uh, uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, as a working fluid. You have to go to your uh, specify your destination folder, open your model, double clicking, and here you are. Okay. Uh, this is our uh, plant. It's simple. We are going to replace uh, concentrated solar tower by the parabolic turf collector. But you have to put in your mind that there is some limitation in uh, in this uh, cycle. It's a design model. Uh, what is your, our limitations? Our limitation is the top cycle temperature. Because uh, the outlet the top cycle temperature, based on, because we are going to utilize or use uh, uh, terminal uh, VP1 uh, organic oil, heat transfer oil through the parabolic trough field. As you can see, we have two main cycles. This is uh, solar field cycle. This is solar field cycle. And this is gas turbine cycle. So, uh, in, for parabolic trough field, we have uh, uh, parabolic trough solar collector and we have a uh, boiler heat exchanger or heat evaporator unit. Uh, in order to transfer energy from uh, from parabolic trough collector through the heat exchanging to uh, the gas cycle, and we have pumping oil pumping unit. So our limitation is our our limitations are mainly it's one limitation. It's the top uh, oil temperature. It is not exceeding over uh, 550 500. Uh, the ratio uh, between five four um, uh, from I'm sorry not five hundred it's from four hundred up to four fifty. Okay, so therefore uh, we can't exceed our gas temperature because of based on many pitch technology technology and and uh, uh, effectiveness of the evaporator itself. Therefore, this is theory the top gas turbine stream it is not going up uh, on uh, 350 degrees Celsius. 400 suppose we have here 100% uh, of uh, heat exchanging uh, process so this this is our main uh, limitation for the cycle that we can go through over 300 for co2 350 and we can can go uh, over uh, 400 for the oil 450 unless or, or we are going to replace uh, the, uh, the heat transfer oil by heat transfer salt suppose we are going to use molten salt in such in such case in that case we can go through up to 500 degrees Celsius because uh, the upper upper uh, molten salt temperature it is not less than uh, 600 degrees Celsius. So we have air cooler for uh, CO2 side and we have compressor for air for CO2 compression and um, the cycle is simple and clear. Let's go inside. Okay, as you can see here, this is our main cycle: parabolic trough, evaporator and our boiler heat exchanger and bump compressor going to the evaporator unit stream goes to the evaporator unit uh, outlet temp outlet condition from uh, the compressor as you can see this stream is outlet condition goes to uh, the evaporator from the compressor to the evaporator heat evaporator and we have here a top cycle temperature going from the evaporator uh, to the hypernation turbine cycle okay uh, the process is simple for for uh, for our units as you can see we have to specify some uh, inputs we can top cycle temperature be assigned from it let's go for control plus okay for the evaporator unit or bullet exchanger we can assign top cycle uh, gas temperature suppose it's uh, uh, three 180 degrees Celsius and we can control some uh, design such as chill diameter or 
number of TUs, something, something like this. For performance, we can assign the effectiveness. Normally, I, I would assign it. As, I would assign it as uh, 0.5 uh, percent as effectiveness. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's go for uh, this is our projector for solar field. What is going on here? Uh, for for projector, we can assign uh, outlet solar field temperature, top solar field temperature for terminal because your gas temperature is around 300 so you have to assign this around uh, 400 at least we can assign ambient temperature 25 as usual and solar radiation suppose it's 600 and some design aspects such as uh, hydraulic mass flow rate through so the field. It, this is uh, this parameter is responsible for uh, uh, if you intend, if you have any intention to divide your loops into segments based on mass flow rate. So you have to assign this based on total mass flow rate. So uh, and we have bump. We can assign just efficiency. Okay, for air compressor, for CO2 compressor. I'm sorry, we have to for CO2 no less than 27 degrees. So I going with 30 degrees Celsius, 25 ambient temperature, gas constants, and compressor efficiency. Suppose it's uh, 0 0.75 and. Uh, 0.9 mechanical shaft efficiency pressure ratio it's 2 4 it's up to you as the designer okay for the, for gas turbine we can assign uh, ambient temperature gas constants and power we need suppose I need uh, 10 megawatts from the gas turbine cycle 10 megawatts okay for cooler we can assign um, efficiency, suppose it's 0.6, fan efficiency 0.8, inner tube, outer tube, uh, chill diameter, it's, suppose it's uh, one, okay, 1.5, 1 meter, okay. Elite, elite air temperature, this is cooling side for the air, suppose it's 0.5 as usual as ambient temperature. And overall heat transfer coefficient usually between uh, for for air coolers uh, 25 up to uh, 600 suppose it's 100 or what per meter per square meter degrees Celsius. Okay, what well, side uh, our M, our inputs? What is uh, going on here? We have here entire loop. This is loop for some. As you can see here, this is your iterations, 1,500 is up to you, okay? Anyway, the problem will, will be solved under uh, 10 iterations. Okay, so we have to assign uh, outlet solar field temperature and the top cycle temperature. Therefore, we are going to calculate, uh, as you can see, there is a stream from uh, if heat evaporation uh, going to the pump and the from the pump going to the platelet, uh, plat, uh, parabolic of collector, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, for let's go inside. From parabolic to heat evaporator, we are going to give uh, give the evaporation uh, our insulby, each collector outlet and this is based on terminal oil and outlet temperature of the oil okay these are go, going to uh, to the evaporator and we we uh, are going to uh, receive from the evaporator uh, via the pump mass flow rate of the solar field this this stream uh, would be calculated mass flow rate because we don't know what is the mass flow rate and we don't know what is the inlet uh, solar field temperature it's a parameter to, cal to be calculated and sure the insulby inlet of the oil go uh, to the parabolic trough 
for the evaporator unit we are going to to receive some uh, from the evaporator we're going to receive uh, uh, in salby and oil this is uh, oil T oil in is the temperature of the oil added to the evaporator okay this this streams these two streams is are coming from the evaporator of collector and we have here for heat evaporator we have to uh, receive uh, in salby from the compressor this gas this gas uh, uh, gas streams three uh, in salby from the the compressor inlet evaporator and outlet from the compressor um, yeah, this is outlet uh, from the compressor and gas mass flow rate okay because for evaporator we have uh, four streams uh, two inputs and two outputs one input from the oil and one output for for, for, for the oil sides and we have one input from uh, the gas via compressor and one outlet from uh, to the uh, turbine cycle because the evaporator is the com we are considering the evaporator as a combustion chamber unit okay and we are going to uh, calculate uh, uh, some outputs such as thermal power you suppose you are going to discover this dynamically you have to go here double clicking and right here Q heat evaporator and kilowatt this is your thermal power of the combustion and don't forget to check this uh, small box I'm sorry this one okay just clicking here I have to check uh, stream signals okay you have to be aware about this small box here okay and this is outlet oil in Salby this is this stream is going to the pump oil and salby oil temperature oil pressure and we are going to calculate the mass flow rate through the parabolic trough field including the pump from this process so mass flow rate for the organic cycle is going from here it, it, uh, it will be calculated from here double clicking in your evaporator you will discover your code here as you can see this is your code this is a function of physical properties of this is co2 and this is oil specific uh, heat capacities as you can see here we have here uh, we're going to first of all uh, calculating um, this is a compressor in salby from the compressor in salby and we have a gas a total mass flow rate of the gases it would it will be calculated from the gas turbine so i have to check a stream from the gas turbine cycle goes to the evaporator unit in order to use it for to calculate or estimate uh, the thermal power okay this is a gas side so by the by the knowing of the effectiveness and oil temperature input from the parabolic trough and gas temperature from the compressor okay we can by effectiveness equation we can calculate the outlet oil temperature and from outlet oil temperature we can calculate as uh, in salby by this equation h oil out okay and we can calculate pressure and we can calculate the, to, the mass flow rate through the organic ranking cycle it is the total mass flow rate through uh, the parabolic trough field we can calculate also mean, uh, mean, mean oil temperature, average gas temperature. We have here uh, overall heat transfer coefficient of the evaporator by this correlation. We can use logarithmic mean temperature uh, technique, but I, I check this and commit. Uh, of, uh, commit. I'm not, I'm not going, going to use this one. And we're going to use um, uh, NTU uh, method. So I have to calculate C cold, this mass flow rate multiplied by heat capacities, and C hot, hot side, it's oil side, cold side is a gas side, and we can calculate uh, C minimum and C maximum uh, by this uh, equations. Suppose I can I check this and comment. Let's stop. Oh, okay, there is no use for this. 
So I have to comment on this. Okay. So we just need C minimum because our correlations is this one. We can use this for cross flow or can use this for all heat exchangers. So I calculated the uh, area, number of, uh, of tubes, tube lenses, and pressure losses, the Reynolds number and fluid uh, aspects, exergetic analysis, total exergy destruction, and this is thermoeconomic, but I will not going to discover the results about this. Okay, so let's go here and check this one as, as usual. The name is here, so I have to check this box. Okay, anything else? Okay, so I have to save this one. For the bump, this is our this is any stream from the evaporator. Pressure losses, outlet pressure, and salby, and salby into the uh, to the bump, and if we have and salby out uh, uh, from the bump. Okay, so this is stream from heat evaporator unit to the bump, and this is stream outlet from the bump to the parabolic trough collector as usual. Okay, and uh, this is outlet oil temperature. It is going to be uh, only bump temperature, and we have sure total mass flow rate M collector. So it's total mass flow rate. Okay, for gas compressor. We have uh, this is this stream is coming from a gas turbine a gas turbine cycle gas turbine unit total gas flow rate and we have pressure ratio its input you just double clicking here and you ca you can add many parameters here as an input and you can as you can see here this is our model uh, I'm going to uh, assign, um, to specify uh, gamma and adiabatic index in order to estimate outlet ideal temperature ts this is outlet compressor temperature t compressor out s entropy uh, based on delta s of zero this is ideal uh, we have pressure ratio we have gamma uh, okay this is um, assumed assumption so after this i, I would like to calculate uh, the, the total actual work of the compressor based on our assumption and the efficiencies and then from this compressor uh, power and total gas flow rate, I can I I will, I will find myself able to calculate the actual temperature. This actual term. Sure, you can add here. Uh, suppose you need to know uh, uh, the volume. We have P V equal uh, M R T. Okay, I'm sorry, M R T. Okay. M multiplied by gas constant multiplied by temperature. B multiplied by V. So from this equation, I'm not going to, to use this. I'm just showing that you can from here, based on pressure, you have pressure, pressure ratio, it's assumed, it's assumption. And you have a gas constant, you have temperatures you already calculated. And we have mass rate. So you can, you find yourself able to find the volume inlet and volume outlet and you, you are leading yourself leading yourself to calculate uh, the compression ratio it's a volume out over volume in anyway uh, so we have here uh, if, um, this is uh, these are our inputs so our outputs that going to the heat evaporator uh, heat evaporator here uh, in our cycle is acting as a combustion chamber okay so from the compressor to the heat evaporator, we, have, we need in salvi, we need a temperature, but this in Kelvin, this in Kelvin, therefore in somehow in evaporator, I used to use Celsius, therefore I um, uh, subtract 273 from the early temperature. Um, beware about this uh, uh, conver uh, convergence. Okay, and we need uh, mass flow rate of the gases. So it's complicated and uh, trial and error loops and so on. And we have here, we have to assign the power in uh, turbine units. Uh, so, so, okay, uh, what we have here, we have here, uh, this is only temperature, this is top cycle temperature. 
top cycle temperature. It's, it's coming from, we assign this one. And outlet temperature, we are going to calculate this parameter from the cooler, from the cooler via effectiveness, and we have to return it back to the uh, high pressure turbine unit. Therefore, we have total mass for total gases, okay, gamma, uh, and uh, uh, total exergy structure rate. For air cooler, we have to assign to found uh, uh, some outputs such as what is the air mass flow rate, fan power, uh, what is the outlet temperature. Outlet temperature of the turbine, we are going to calculate it from here. And we can calculate the outlet air temperature. It's quite uh, interesting. And we can calculate area, exergy destruction, and so on. So here we can find out some performance analysis, finally. Work uh, uh, net power, uh, work ratio, uh, total uh, exergy destruction rate, and efficiency. As you can see here, simple uh, model based on your uh, results. Let's hit on and just set your limitation time to zero and let's saving and let's hit run okay very good so uh, don't forget that we have we need to generate 10 uh, 10 megawatts okay let's discover our results okay Total mass flow rate is it's around 30 kilogram per second. This is the total field mass flow rate. So you can assign here, as I told you, hydraulic mass flow rate per loop. Suppose I need two kilogram per second per loop. So it will uh, affect on uh, the number of loops here. As you can see, this number of loops and number of uh, solar collector segments. As you can see here, it changed number of loops is change it is it become uh, less so we have here uh, uh, inlet temperature so this is inlet temperature based on effectiveness of the evaporator you can you can change the effectiveness and you will find your results here okay and we have here this is outlet temperature from the field 400 well, I already assigned this one I have outlet temperature outlet enthalpy area this total area of the solar field uh, total length, Reynolds number, width of the loop, uh, number of loops, number of solar fields, uh, less pressure losses, efficiency of the parabolic trough collector, and total reversibility through the field, total exergy in, and thermoconomic cost analysis. I will, I will not going to use this one. Let's come and go in here and check this one. We need to discover these results. Okay, for evaporator. Evaporation. Yes, we have here thermal power and so the outlet of the oil, outlet temperature. This this outlet temperature is 249 going to the pump, inlet to the pump, as you can see here. Okay, this inlet to the pump. Let's copy this one and control I and take a stream from here and hit run. And this is 249 as expected 249.4 outlet going to the pump 249 going to the pump okay so the outlet from the pump would become 250 okay t bump out temperature okay let's double clicking t bump out okay so for the compressor what is the outlet temperature Okay, outlet temperature is around 374 Kelvin with install base 343 kilojoule per kilogram and the power, the, the power consumption, power, uh, the compressor is, is going to harvest around 1 megawatt, 1.7 megawatts uh, of, the, of the power from the main grid. So let's go into the evaporator. Okay, uh, T evaporation in, yes, here. Okay, 300 Kelvin, it means 100, 101, 101 uh, degrees Celsius if we subtract from 
173 as a conversion. Uh, for for uh, this is our bump compressor uh, uh, turbine unit. This is inlet uh, temperature and this is outlet temperature. It's, it's dropped from it's dropped from 380 down to uh, 37.5 based on air cooler because air cooler is responsible for this. If you control your effectiveness, it will con change these uh, results surely. Okay, and we have uh, access to the structure rate in minus because we have one input with two uh, with two outputs. It's normal gamma for CO2. Uh, this is total gas flow rate. It's calculated here. This is total gas flow rate. Let's go here. Check it. And then we have to sign M gas total. Okay. Okay, uh, this is air condenser out. Oh, okay, this is outlet to turbine uh, temperature. And outlet air temperature is around 32. It's from 25 up to uh, 32. And we have here area of the air cooler. It's air cooler area, number of tubes, C cold, C minimum, C hot, number of transfer unit, and uh, uh, sure, you can control overall heat transfer coefficient, and you write your uh, uh, absolutely find your results uh, on uh, your area. Okay, suppose I'm going to, to make some changes with um, infinity. Let's go here, hit run, and I'll make some changes during my run. Let's hit here. Okay. I will increase um, the pressure ratio up to four, up to four, okay? And I will change the condenser effectiveness, air cooler increasing the effective, eff effectiveness or efficiency of uh, the air cooler, okay? That's enough for this. You can change, suppose I'm going to increase the overall heat transfer coefficient up to uh, suppose it's uh, 300 okay for parabolic trough field let's decrease the oil temperature down to uh, 360 and top cycle temperature I have to down this to 300 just 300 okay okay that's it. Stop. It's just an example. I'm just doing some changes in order to see uh, my effects on the cycle, upside down, fluctuating, uh, or some fluctuation uh, in my results. Okay, plant efficiency fluctuated. Net power up and down. Okay, pressure ratio, power power ratio, uh, total exergy field. Total exchange destruction, I'm sorry. It's all the field area changing, okay? Because mass flow is it changing. Uh, thermal power uh, area of, um, so we can, let's go here and click format. It's from, uh, from, uh, suppose it's, uh, yes. Y is from three up to five, okay? Um, Temperature of outlet of the bump is from 240, 240. Okay, in order to let's go here and add more uh, more results. Uh, total mass flow rates. This is total mass flow rates. Gas mass flow rates. And we have here outlet. Um, Inlet temperature to the turbine unit, and this is outlet temperature. Overall heat transfer, C hot and C minimum area of the evaporator. So you have many, many parameter uh, uh, to address fan power. Okay, you can export this this results. You can click here and going to, or you can click here for data cursor show. So you can 
can remove this we can add two courses from beginning and ending but the, to see my our results we can click here on click here and click export in order to export your data to the m file or or, or mat file or workspace you already have a data file out here in uh, <coughs> i'm sorry you will find here your your outputs some outputs you find it here okay if you type here uh, area collector total you will find your results here so you can deal it with if i will double clicking here you will find it okay uh, suppose you are uh, you can save this uh, or send it to a figure or copy all figures it's up to you uh, it become it become uh, so easy for uh, for our model or uh, based on our ex data extraction or types of data you can uh, find it easy uh, to handle and to use even in transient mode or dynamic mode or or even single point single point zero okay hit stop saving okay finally I would like to thank you for your watching. Um, uh, I hope that you can like, share, and subscribe in order to support us. Thank you very much uh, for your interest. Thank you.